All right, and we're back. Now, before I do the explanation of this, I would suggest that you go back and you watch the presentation two or three more times and even take notes and think about how you think the method was done and where you saw points that could maybe you would change or, or do better or, or whatever it is, notes you want to do. And sometimes that's the best way to learn before you actually learn how this is done. So the first thing I'm going to do is take you through the pieces you'll need. You'll need, um, I'm using here, uh, you can call them index cards, but they're actually uh, double blank playing cards. You'll need 10. The top five are, ex are exactly what they look like. Blank on the back, and on the front they have the five candy bars that I've written on them. And that's where you will make your choice. In the beginning, I do whatever, uh, we'll just go back and look at the presentation, but I'm, I'm trying to take them through this idea that their choices are not their own. And then uh, what I did, uh, and I wanted to show you as many uh, kinds of different ways you could do the presentation. So I'm not saying that that would be necessary the way I would do it every time. But I did a double lift. I eliminated a couple cards. I used the Kit Kat uh, and, did a, uh, and had it on top and did a double lift and forced a different card. So that they think that I'm placing down, for instance, Reese's, but I'm really placing down the Kit Kat. Uh, my wife is not a fan of that one. And she says, I really don't like it. I think it kind of muddies the waters. And I would have to tell you that she's only right most of the time. So that's really up to you and how you want to perform it. But I just want to show you that that, that was a possible way. Um, so one way you might want to do is just go through, maybe show one that you have eliminated, and now you'll place the, the, the Kit Kat down on the table. You can also decide to place the Kit Kat into this uh, extra envelope, a purple envelope I have here. Uh, don't, of course, don't let them see what you're going to have them pick, and now you'll place it down, and these can go in your pocket or wherever. The second set of cards uh, in this deck, uh, you can even spread them slightly. This looks great. It looks fair, but it's not fair at all, and I'll show you what I mean. On the backs, or on the, yeah, on the bottom, so to speak, or on the face, we'll call it, uh, you have the five candy bars again, yes, but on the backs, on the one that says Kit Kat, it is blank. But the rest all say Kit Kat on the back. So when it sits on the table, you take the first five. This looks very ordinary. And like I say, you could even have them, you know, casually spread. You don't have to be really neat about it because, you know, you, the, the, the Kit Kat is taking the center of the card. So then when you do is you, you will turn them over, spread them out, and place them in the envelopes. Now I want to talk a little bit about how this, how you're layering this piece. Oh, I should tell you where the piece comes from. It comes from 13 Steps uh, to Mentalism, and it's called The Third Choice. It's inside this book. That's the skeleton of this piece. Now, I built quite a bit on this and layered it so that the method is almost impossible to backtrack to. The first thing was having the first five cards that you could pick from makes people think, well, gosh, he could have picked any card as opposed to if I only had one card and said oh what I'm gonna make you pick is in this envelope and that's it then you, then the, the a tendency would be to think well he's already shown me that there's only one possible answer but by having five I don't know it could have been anything so now uh, these go inside the envelopes now the envelopes as you remember uh, do have writing on them. so I don't want them to see that at first and I place them in to the envelopes each one so so on and so forth now when I'm done, and you want to remember, remember for the Kit Kat one, you want to remember which envelope you put that in. And so what I'll do is the one, and I like to use the Rich and Creamy, is I'll have that on the bottom of my stack. So that will be the last one I slide in, because I know for a fact that it's in the Rich and Creamy. And then I shuffle them so that they don't quite remember where it's at. Now I show them the you know what I've written on these, a clever little... Uh, uh, kind of marketing ploy, so to speak. Now, this is where it gets to be fun, and it adds another dimension. It's not just envelopes. I'm just forcing an, you know, an envelope on you, so to speak, but I'm actually trying to show that it's a marketing idea. And even the placement, as you saw in the, in the presentation of this, I talk about, oh, that one's far away. Who wants to pick that one? And by, and by having colors, I've even written uh, different colors. Like I have one written in blue and uh, one written in red. The other's written in black. It allows you um, to have a lot to say about the ones they don't pick. Because when you lay the five out, the first thing you want to do is say, now I'm going to have you choose two that you will not select. I want you to eliminate them, and I, and I want to be very fair in the words. 
So they eliminate two, arrange the last three. Now, what was great about this presentation is I will tell you, having done this quite a few times, uh, rich creamy chocolate is a favorite. Most people like to pick that one. It has a higher hit rate than the rest. So you saw the most perfect outcome uh, to this trick. So what happened was I was able to tell them, you open that one. I had the uh, card laying on the table and then they could just turn that over as well. It was a perfect match. However, what happens if they don't pick the rich creamy one, right? Well, you have to remember one thing. When you placed them in, you placed them in this way, but you're going to have to turn it over and slide it out this way, right? Because you want the Kit Kat to be seen and not the Twix. So you have to remember the orientation. You place them in this way, so when you take it out, it'll be the, the, the fun saying on the top. And now Kit Kat, now you can have, and now there might be a little bit, this is the part where there's a little bit of disconnect because if anyone remembered, wait a minute, how did, why he turned it over? I doubt, very few people are gonna remember that detail, but just in case, before I pick this up to uh, pull it out, I might say, you know what? This is the one you selected. That's the one I said you select. Go ahead and open that one and open it. You know, pick it up and open it. And while they're doing that, then the little move here, I can actually open it like this and then slide out and it kind of gets hidden. And it's just another level of deception. And so now we have the match. Now, the next thing, uh, the next level of deception that's kind of fun on this is I have in the bag that I had all of these items I actually had the Kit Kat bar. Because we're in a kind of a precarious position right now. I have the two cards. When people are done, especially in a close-up environment, they're stunned and they want to touch the props. Not because they're trying to bust you necessarily, but they're just trying to make sense of the world. And so they pick up this one, you're good, but if they pick up the one that has the back, you're in trouble. So I want to, and you don't want to like quickly, like, oh, let's put everything away, because that looks, that can look suspicious. So add one more layer and say, oh, and by the way, I was so sure. Now you dump the Kit Kat out, Kit Kat out of the bag. And this looks now more interesting than the two cars because they're going to, holy, is there nothing else in this bag? Holy cow. Now, as you put everything away, it seems very fair. And you can even give them the Kit Kat. There you go, because that's, I knew you were going to pick that one. So that's how this particular uh, trick works. Now, I do want to say one thing. In the beginning, I made this a very fun uh, uh, you know, wacky, corny kind of presentation. It had some truth to it, but it was more aimed at having fun and more magic-y than mentalism-y. If you want to take this and change the, the, the aesthetic of the trick, the feel, then I would say, you know, to make it more serious, say, or to more uh, cerebral, is you would definitely not do the double lift. You would place the one in the envelope. And instead of having... Uh, multiple big phrases on here, I might just have chocolate. And on the next one, I might have uh, creamy. And on this one, I might have, you know, some other, just a, a one or two word phrase uh, to make it seem more psychological. And uh, then maybe not so many jokes. But, but you have to choose how you're going to perform it. If I'm in an environment where I know that this is a fun environment, people are kind of going to be louder and we're having fun, I'll go with this kind of corny one. If I'm doing a more theatrical performance, then I might go with a more mentalism feel and, and you know go for more drama than comedy. But it's really up to you, and you have to decide how you want to kind of put this together, what are the things you want to put on the envelopes, and I hope you enjoyed this. So uh, thanks for watching.